We now come to the most complicated of all. The f number four, marga. Marga in Sanskrit means path. And the Buddha taught an eightfold path for the realization of nirvana. This re always reminds me of a story about Dr. Suzuki, who, was a, who is a very, very great Buddhist scholar. And uh, many years ago, he was giving a fundamental lecture on Buddhism at the University of Hawaii. And he got to, he'd been going through these four truths, and he said, Ah, fourth noble truth is Kora Nobur Eightfold Path. First step of uh, Nobur Eightfold Path called uh, Shoken. Shoken Japanese mean uh, right view. Or Buddhism fundamentally is right view, right way of viewing this world. Second step of Noble Eightfold Path is, uh, oh, I forget second step. You look it up in the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to do rather the same thing. <laughs> what is important is this. The Eightfold Path has uh, is really got three divisions in it. The first are concerned with understanding. The second division is concerned with conduct. And the third division is concerned with meditation. And every step in the path is preceded by the Sanskrit word samyak, in which sam is the key word, in Pali, samma. And so, the first step, samyak drishti, which means, drishti means a view, a way of looking at things, a vision, an attitude, something like that. But this word samyak is in ordinary texts on Buddhism almost invariably translated right. This is a very bad translation. It does, of course, the word is used in certain contexts in Sanskrit to mean right, correct. But it has other and wider meanings. Some means, like our word some, which is derived from it, complete, total, all-embracing. It also has the meaning of middle way. Uh, representing, as it were, the fulcrum, the center, the point of balance in a totality. Middle way way of looking at things. Middle way way of understanding the Dharma. Middle way way of speech, of conduct, of livelihood, and so on. Now, this is particularly cogent when it comes to Buddhist ideas of behavior. 